So now I want to share with you three practical ways that I think God can help you pray with your kids and on your own to bring more peace to your home. And the first one is breath prayers. And this is my favorite way to pray currently. And don't get me wrong, I do love long uninterrupted prayer time, but all throughout the day, I can do these quick little breath prayers too. No matter where I am or what I'm doing, I breathe in, say a part of a prayer, and then breathe out and say the other part of a prayer, or you can do it with a verse. So um, for example, what we talked about today with remembering that God is a good dad, you can breathe in through your nose, you are a good dad. That's just great for reminding yourself who God is. I am your loved child. Sometimes I do that before I even get out of bed just to remember who he is and who I am. Um, my daughter's favorite, my oldest daughter, she's nine. She says, this is hard, but you are with me. And that's such a good one if you are in the middle of something hard, like a fight, or if your kids are driving you crazy, or schoolwork is getting difficult, you can pray and teach your kids to pray. This is hard, but you are with me. It's just a reminder that God is with us in every moment. Or our Holmstrom family favorite that we've been doing for years, we say, Holy Spirit, give me peace. And just that deep breathing paired with crying out to God is just such a good way to quickly calm down and remember that it's not up to us. It's up to God to help us in every moment. And I love that my kids teach each other. I have four kids and, you know, they've seen me do it for years. So the older ones have kind of taught the younger ones how to do it. And it's such a great tool to teach our kids because it's something they can do with us. But they can also do it when they're on their own, when they're at school or when they're afraid in the middle of the night or whatever's going on. They can learn to do breath prayers and breathe and talk to Jesus. And nobody even has to know they're doing it, which is cool. Okay, the second one I want to share with you is listening prayers. And you know, God speaks to us through his word. He speaks to us through other people sometimes, but he also speaks to us in quiet whispers. And it's hard to hear him when we don't slow down for just a second, just slow down and listen. So that's something we've been doing in our family more is just setting a timer and listening to God's voice. And sometimes with the kids, I'll say something like, okay, we're gonna set the timer for 30 seconds or we're gonna pause for a few seconds. And we're just going to think about how awesome God is. Or we're going to ask God to show us that he loves us, to remind us. Or sometimes we have a tough decision to make and we just say, we're going to listen. And we might not hear anything, but maybe God will bring a verse to mind. Um, and this has just been something that's been so special to do on my own, to just breathe and crawl into his lap and open my journal and say, God, would you speak to me about my kids? Um, and it's something that takes practice and it's hard for our busy minds to do, but it's so powerful. And I think it's so great to teach our kids while they're young so that as adults, they're used to it. They're used to being quiet before God. And so one thing we do in our family too, is we ask God to wake up our hearts, to speak to us, to show us, convict us when we're going down the wrong path. And it's hard to hear him when we're going, going, going. And you know, it's same with kids too. It's hard for them. Research shows us kids don't voluntarily share with us the really hard things that are going on unless we ask them. And I can remember this as a kid. I can remember being a young girl and wrestling with some fears and some thoughts, and I didn't really know where to take them. So one thing that we do in our house is at night when we're tucking them in, sometimes we'll say, is there anything that you've been thinking about in your mind or feeling in your heart that you haven't shared with me. And we have had some awesome conversations. We've been able to hear um, just what God's doing in their hearts or maybe even some of the lies that they believe that we could help them um, to see the truth. And um, I think it's just really helpful for us as parents to slow down, to spend time being quiet before God, to ask him to speak to us and to speak about our kids. Um, to guide our days, even starting your morning like that, just falling out of bed on your knees and just saying, God, is there anything you want to say to me as I go about this day? Is there any way you want to lead me? And just being quiet and listening to his voice. Um, okay, the last one is called the prayer of examine. And Steph has a whole chapter of this in our book. This is something that her family had done for years and we've adopted it in our home and it has been 
so transformative, so I have to tell you about it. Um, basically, it's just the practice of noticing God in your day. So how we do it in our family, we just call it the dinner game because that's more our style of what we want to call it. And we're sitting around the table and we just go around and everybody shares the best part of their day, the hardest part of their day and where they saw God working. And we do this maybe once or twice a week. And when we first started a couple years back, my kids couldn't think of anything to say for where did we see God working. And now I can't get them to stop talking. They're saying things like, I saw God working when Charlie was kind to me or when I actually liked this dinner that you made, mom, or when we were outside and the sky looked so beautiful. Or, you know, when we had that delicious meal or when this friend got to come over i saw god working or when you and dad said sorry to each other i saw him working through you um and that has been just such a special thing for our family to notice that even on the hard days and even in the hard moments god is with us that in the good moments god is with us it helps us to recognize him more in our day and joy and peace like that from the lord are not things that we have to wait for. We don't have to wait for our circumstances to get better. We can have them in a hospital room. We can have them with a sick kid. We can have them when we are late to work or stuck in traffic, or it's a random Tuesday morning and we can't wait for nap time. We can stop and we can breathe and we can pray. 